The autumn evening breeze carried the faint scent of pine and damp leaves through the window as I sat alone in our living room. Outside, the sun dipped behind the horizon, casting long shadows that draped the walls like memories fading into the twilight. For a while, I simply sat there, clutching the last photograph we had taken together. The colors washed out from time and overexposure. In the picture, she smiled like she always did. Warmly, brightly, fully. Her arm was slung around my shoulders, pulling me close like she never wanted to let go. But she had to. The accident made sure of that. It happened so quickly that August morning, almost too sudden for my mind to process. The traffic was unusually thick as she drove home from work, the usual route dotted with construction barriers and detours. A driver ran a red light, and she didn't stand a chance. Three cars mangled and twisted on the asphalt, and amidst the shattered glass and the acrid smell of gasoline, she left this world. The phone call tore through me like a sharp blade. I remember the paramedic's voice over the line, steady and professional, telling me she had died on the scene. The words clanged in my head like an iron bell, each tolling syllable numbing me as if my heart had been frozen solid. The days after felt like trudging through fog, the kind that makes every street unfamiliar and every corner foreign. I would wake up to an empty bed and a hollow feeling, her laughter echoing through my mind like a cruel reminder of what I'd lost. I sorted through her things, from the clothes that still smelled of her to the little trinkets she collected from our vacations. Cinnamon, a scent she adored so much that she practically wore it like a second skin. Each time I passed her favorite cafe, the aroma stung my eyes and prickled my throat. The emptiness became a constant companion, a whispering ghost that lingered at my side every time I walked through our front door, saw her favorite chair by the window, or found a stray strand of her long, dark hair caught in the bristles of her hairbrush. Friends and family visited to offer their condolences, but their sympathy was like thin gruel to my aching soul. They urged me to seek solace in faith, hobbies, or therapy, but nothing could fill the void that was left behind. Late at night, when the world was silent and sleep refused to come, I found myself scrolling through her old social media posts and messages, reading them again and again until the letters blurred together into meaningless shapes. She had been so vibrant and daring, a whirlwind of life who could ignite a room with her smile and extinguish every worry with a simple touch. I felt her absence everywhere, and though I kept her phone active to revisit her albums and messages, I never expected to see her name light up on my screen again. Those days were marked by pain, but I knew that even through the fog of grief, her memory would eventually guide me back to some semblance of normalcy. The evening breeze shifted, a faint chill trailing in its wake. I clutched the photograph a little tighter and tried not to think of her final moments. Instead, I gazed into her familiar smile and tried to remember how life felt before the accident. Before that morning, when her laughter and warmth still filled the room like sunshine. But the ghosts have a way of holding on even when they're only a memory. And some nights, I swear the air seemed to hum with a familiar presence. A soft breath just beyond reach. The whisper of something not quite gone. It started innocently enough. I was lying in bed, late at night, scrolling through her Facebook profile. I couldn't bring myself to memorialize the page, so I left it as it was filled with her witty updates and snapshots from our travels. Every now and then, I'd send her a private message, sharing my grief and updating her on how things were changing without her. It was a ritual that brought me comfort, like lighting a candle in the darkness. One night, after typing another message, just a simple, I miss you. I drifted into a restless sleep, the phone slipping from my fingers onto the nightstand. In the depths of my dreams, I thought I heard the soft chime of a notification, 
but it was easily dismissed as part of the nighttime haze. The next morning, my eyes were still heavy as I reached for the phone. I rubbed the sleep from my eyes and scrolled through the usual news, emails, and social media. Then, amidst the notifications, I saw it, a new message on Messenger from her. My breath caught in my throat, and my fingers froze over the screen. The sender was unmistakable. Her profile picture. Her name. The message preview was simple. Just a greeting. Hey! It couldn't be real. My mind raced with the possibilities. A friend hacking her account, a glitch in the platform, or maybe, just maybe, a cruel joke. My heart pounded as I clicked to open the conversation. The single word stood alone, seemingly innocent, and yet it loomed over me like a specter. I wanted to believe it was a mistake, but a familiar gnawing sensation in my gut told me something wasn't right. I responded tentatively. Who is this? Moments later, another reply appeared, quicker than I could have expected. It's me. I shook my head, fighting off a surge of panic. It couldn't be her. She was gone. My mind raced to dismiss it as a prank, but how could I not have hope? Still, I needed to confirm my suspicions. This isn't funny. Who's playing this joke? There was a brief pause before another message appeared. I'm not joking, darling. I miss you. A chill ran down my spine as I stared at the screen. The words blurred as panic seized me. This was the same affectionate term she used for me in her messages. Something deeply personal and private. It was as if she had reached out from beyond the grave, using a voice only I could recognize. This couldn't be real, but it felt too personal to be an accident. My mind swirled as I struggled to make sense of it all. I decided to reach out to a tech-savvy friend, Ben, who knew his way around social media. I sent him screenshots and explained my concerns. It's likely someone spoofing her account, he said. I'd suggest changing the password and checking the login activity. I followed his advice immediately, resetting the password and scanning the activity logs. But to my surprise, there were no unusual logins. Everything was normal, with the only access being from my own devices. As far as Facebook was concerned, the messages were coming directly from her account. Unable to focus on work that day, I spent hours combing through her profile, her messages, anything that could hint at the culprit. But nothing stood out. No suspicious comments, no unfamiliar friends, just the same old posts she'd made when she was alive, echoing through the digital void. By nightfall, I was emotionally drained. I settled back into bed, my phone clenched tightly in my hand, and thought about those messages. Could it really be her reaching out to me? Or was this all in my head? When sleep finally found me, I dreamt of her again. But this time, she was closer. She stood in the doorway of our bedroom, her silhouette softened by the moonlight. She whispered something I couldn't hear, but that stirred me awake. The room was still, and the phone glowed dimly beside me. A new message awaited. Meet me at our spot. I knew exactly where she meant, an overlook in the city park where we often went to watch the sunrise. My pulse quickened. It was another detail that only she would know. As the minutes passed, the night grew quieter, but the silence pressed against my chest. For a moment, I considered ignoring it all, turning away from the screen and slipping back into the relative safety of sleep. But curiosity got the better of me. What if it really was her, finding some way to reach me? What if she needed me, and this was the only way to answer her call? So I got out of bed, dressed quickly, and headed toward the park. The air was crisp and cold, biting against my cheeks as I walked through the empty streets, my footsteps echoing off the pavement. When I arrived at the Overlook, the city lay stretched out below, silent and slumbering under the moonlight. I waited, my breath fogging up in the night air, but there was nothing. No sign. No movement. No whisper. My phone vibrated in my pocket. I pulled it out to read her message. Turn around. 
With bated breath, I slowly turned, only to find an empty, dark path stretching back toward the park's entrance. I'm right here. I squinted into the darkness, straining my eyes, but I couldn't see her. And then I heard it, a faint echo, like a voice carried by the wind. Can you hear me? I could almost feel her presence nearby, but she remained just beyond reach, like a shadow that melted away at my touch. For hours, I waited and called out her name, but all I got in return were the whispers of the night breeze. Eventually, exhausted and empty, I trudged back home, her words lingering in my mind. I thought I was losing my grip on reality, but the morning brought another message. I'm sorry I scared you. I just needed to know you could hear me. My fingers hovered over the screen as I wondered what to say next. I had a thousand questions, and no answers. The days following that eerie night passed in a blur. My thoughts tangled in a web of uncertainty and fear. The messages from my partner's account continued, always intimate and familiar, as if she were reaching out from across a void I couldn't fully understand. Her words were comforting, a tether to a memory that kept me sane, but they came with a heavy weight. The responses grew more frequent and specific, gradually unraveling details from our life that no one else should have known. Each day, I found myself drawn deeper into this mysterious digital world, scrolling through forums and support groups that specialized in unexplained phenomena. One evening, I stumbled upon a group called The Digital Beyond, which was dedicated to the idea that the dead could reach out through technology. The posts were a mix of wild speculation and deeply personal stories, ranging from harmless signs to terrifying experiences that left people scarred. In a thread about afterlife communication, I found a post that mirrored my own situation almost too perfectly. Messages from a deceased loved one that seemed to know private details. A user named Gravewalker described messages from his late wife, which quickly grew disturbing. He warned that as soon as he tried to investigate further, things took a dark turn. The post included a link to a private online chat, a space for others going through similar experiences. Desperate for answers, I joined, and soon found myself in conversation with others who believed they had communicated with deceased loved ones through digital means. Their stories varied in intensity, but all shared a common thread. Every one of them felt an unbreakable pull toward those messages. A user named Cassandra told me about her husband's messages, guiding her to a secluded graveyard where she believed she could find answers. Instead, she found herself surrounded by shadows and almost slipped into what she described as a bottomless abyss. She cautioned me against falling too deep into these messages. Another user, Harbinger, claimed that he had discovered a digital ritual to communicate with spirits. He explained that certain patterns, symbols, and codes embedded in digital platforms acted as keys to unlock hidden realms between life and death. He warned me that, Opening a door doesn't mean you can close it. These tales of spectral contact sent chills through me, but I couldn't resist the allure of solving this mystery. I engaged with them further, sharing my own encounters and learning more about the unwritten rules that governed these spectral communications. Rule 1. Messages often started innocently, but would grow darker over time. Rule 2. Once a digital connection was made, it was nearly impossible to break. Rule three, the entity on the other side often asked for a favor or task, something that would bring them peace, but each task would extract a toll. The more I learned, the clearer it became that I was stepping into dangerous territory. One evening, I received a new message from her account. I need your help. The room seemed to tighten around me as I read those words. She needed my help, but what could I do? The message was followed by an address, a vacant lot on the outskirts of town that used to be an electronics store where we'd often browse old records together. Find me here, the message continued. The next night, I arrived at the empty lot, the moon casting long shadows over the cracked pavement. I stood at the entrance, feeling an invisible tug pulling me toward the remains of the store. 
The silence was oppressive, broken only by the distant hum of passing traffic. I glanced at my phone, but the screen flickered and refused to unlock. I cursed under my breath and took a step forward, my footsteps echoing through the empty lot. Every instinct screamed at me to leave, but I couldn't ignore the plea for help. A faint rustling caught my attention. My gaze darted to the edge of the lot where a dim light flickered. There, beneath the soft glow, I saw a silhouette. A figure draped in darkness with familiar features that seemed to shimmer between reality and illusion. Her hair floated on the breeze, and her hand reached out toward me, fingers beckoning. But the instant I tried to reach back, she vanished like mist in the wind, leaving nothing but the empty lot and the cold night air. My phone buzzed, and I fumbled to unlock it. Please, don't leave me. I can't stay here anymore. I looked around, the oppressive silence pressing down on me as I tried to make sense of the message. There was no sign of her, no trail to follow. I was left alone, staring at a screen that felt like a lifeline fraying in my grasp. I returned home, restless and confused. Every corner of our apartment seemed to hold traces of her. Her lingering perfume, her old coat draped over the chair by the window, the coffee cup she'd left on the counter that last morning. Everything was just as she'd left it, frozen in time. The messages didn't stop even after I deleted her account. They came more frequently, filled with increasingly desperate pleas. Every day, my phone buzzed with her familiar words, begging me to return to the abandoned lot, the place where we'd last met in that haunting vision. One night, after a particularly vivid dream of her standing by my bed, whispering in my ear, I couldn't take it any longer. Her final message lingered on my phone's screen. Tonight, meet me where we last stood. I need you. I knew I shouldn't go, but I couldn't resist the pull. The bitter wind cut through me as I made my way to the abandoned lot. The night was pitch black, and the moon was hidden behind thick clouds, leaving only the faint glow of my phone to light the way. When I reached the lot, my breath fogging in the cold air, I heard her voice drifting on the breeze. I'm so glad you came. Her voice echoed from all directions, and the air grew thick around me. I called her name, my voice trembling, and suddenly, the temperature plummeted. A chill settled into my bones, and I could barely hold my phone steady as it buzzed once more. Follow me. Find me. The screen flickered, and the coordinates changed, pointing me toward the overgrown entrance of the old store's basement. I hesitated, but her voice grew more insistent, urging me to move forward. I descended the crumbling steps, the flashlight on my phone flickering weakly. Each creak of the old wood sent my heart racing as I felt her presence pressing closer. In the basement, the air was thick with mildew and decay. My footsteps stirred dust and scattered debris as I moved through the darkness. In the corner of the room, a faint glow pulsed like a dim heartbeat. I approached cautiously, my breath visible in the freezing air, and realized the glow was coming from a mirror covered in grime and cobwebs. Her face appeared on its surface, and she reached out through the fog, her hands shimmering in the dim light. Come closer, darling. I felt her icy fingers entwine with mine as she pulled me toward the mirror. My pulse quickened as the room began to spin, her face swirling around me in the reflection. Let's be together again. Forever. Before I could pull away, her grip tightened, and she yanked me through the mirror with a force that left me breathless. The world around me shattered like glass, and darkness engulfed me. When I awoke, I was no longer in the basement. The air hummed with static, and the ground was cold and smooth beneath me. A dim light pulsed from above, illuminating a vast expanse of digital emptiness stretching into the horizon. I tried to move, but my limbs felt weightless, my voice echoing into the void. In the distance, I saw her silhouette, flickering like an old television screen. She stood, beckoning me forward with that familiar, twisted smile. 
We're together now, she whispered, and her words seemed to echo from within my own mind. But no matter how much I tried to reach her, she stayed just out of reach, slipping through my grasp like mist. My screams dissolved into static, lost to the emptiness that swallowed us both. They found my phone abandoned at the entrance to the basement the next morning. My friends searched for weeks, but no trace of me was ever found. All that remained was the buzzing of static, playing endlessly on the shattered screen. The phone was discovered at dawn, lying on the cracked pavement by the entrance to the old store's basement. An early morning jogger noticed it flashing in the faint light and picked it up. Its screen was cracked, a spiderweb of fractures distorting the glow of the notification still active on its display. The jogger turned the phone over in his hands and immediately called the police, recounting how strange it seemed to be lying there. An investigation was launched, with authorities quickly identifying the phone's owner and connecting it to a missing persons report filed just days earlier. Search teams scoured the lot, the surrounding neighborhoods, and beyond, but they found no sign of the man who had disappeared into the night. Weeks went by, and despite the efforts of friends, family, and authorities, the man remained missing, his whereabouts unknown. All that lingered were rumors and whispers about the lot and its basement, where people claimed to hear echoes of static drifting through the walls. One investigator, frustrated by the lack of progress, opened the phone one evening, scrolling through the last messages in search of clues. His brow furrowed as he read them, short, frantic pleas repeating the same coordinates over and over. Each message seemed to urge the man to meet someone at that abandoned spot. But there was one message that stood out from the rest, sent from a blocked number. Follow me. Find me. The investigator tapped the message, but nothing happened. He checked the phone's memory logs and noticed something strange. A file that appeared to be a corrupted video. When he tried to play it, the screen flickered to static, before revealing a distorted silhouette in a shadowy room. The faint outline of the missing man's face seemed to shimmer into view, his mouth moving in a desperate plea, his eyes filled with terror. But the video cut out before the message could be heard, replaced by an empty, hollow static. The investigator tried to replay it several times, but the file was gone. The room fell into silence, and he looked at the darkened screen, a chill running down his spine. Somewhere beyond the veil of the digital world, echoes of the man's voice seemed to linger, pleading for release from an invisible purgatory. The phone buzzed one final time, and the investigator checked the screen to find a new message waiting. Come find me. His blood ran cold, and he deleted the message, leaving the phone behind as he quickly shut the door and stepped away. He would never forget that night, or the voice that seemed to resonate through the static. A digital ghost haunting the very devices we use every day.